What's going on guys and welcome to another Boosted Films video as I continue my process of documenting everything I touch on my Evo. This video is basically going to talk about changing the rear main seal. Now this process is actually pretty straightforward but I think a lot of the value here is just kind of seeing exactly what that rear main seal and that rear main seal housing looks like and also just letting you know up front basically that you don't need to drop your oil pan to change the rear main seal, which is good. But on the flip side of that, you do need to drop your transmission to get to this rear main seal. So that's about it for this introduction. Now we'll get into the video. So here we are with the transmission removed from our Evo 8 or 9. And of course, what we're going to want to do here is just remove the bolts holding on the pressure plate. Those bolts shouldn't be held on too tight, so you should be able to get them to break free rather easily, but uh, beware that the engine could uh, want to spin over, so you may have to use a screwdriver or something to kind of hold that in place, or even just hold it with your hand uh, to break those bolts loose initially. And once you get that last bolt free, you should be able to uh, pull down your uh, pressure plate, and then the clutch will be there as well, obviously. So now that the clutch is out of the way, you can see the flywheel and flywheel bolts. And we're going to want to remove those flywheel bolts with some sort of impact wrench, most likely. And since they will be so tight, you will want to make sure that you have your socket on nice and flat. You don't want to round those off. Uh, that will create a huge problem for you later on if you end up rounding, rounding off the head of those bolts. So make sure they're on there uh, properly before you start uh, trying to break them loose. And if for any reason you did not actually have an impact or if it seems like your engine just really wants to turn over, you can put one of your pressure plate bolts back in as I'm showing here and then put a bolt kind of in the bell housing area uh, where a bell housing bolt went in and then you should be able to hold that to keep it from spinning over if for whatever reason your engine wants to turn over while you're trying to break these bolts loose. And now I'm just changing the camera view so I could get underneath uh, the car so I could hold that flywheel up once I got those last couple bolts broke free. So once you remove all the bolts, you should be able to pull off your flywheel. And now you can see our starter plate and our rear main seal. And that's kind of what we're gonna do next is change out our rear main seal and we're gonna put in a new starter plate as well. So I'm honestly not 100% sure if there are normally two bolts holding that starter plate in place, uh, but mine only had one bolt on there and that's really all you should need to hold that plate in place anyways. Uh, so I broke that one bolt loose and then I was able to remove my old starter plate. The next thing I wanted to do is I just wanted to get in and clean up the area around the rear main seal as much as I could before I actually pulled off that rear main seal and that rear main seal housing. Because once you do remove that rear main seal, basically you're going to have an opening exposed to your engine oil pan. So you want to obviously try your best to prevent things from falling into your oil pan. So next I just drained my oil just so there wouldn't be too much oil right at the top of the oil pan or near the bottom of that rear main seal. And again here you're going to simply want to remove the bolts holding that rear main seal in place. There's going to be five bolts holding that rear main seal to the engine block and then there's going to be two bolts basically holding the oil pan to that rear main seal housing. And here I'm just showing this old rear main seal once all the bolts have been taken out. And then there are kind of three places on this rear main seal housing that you should be able to kind of pry on uh, to work this free. So I kind of worked back and forth. I did a little bit from the top, um, but then mostly from the right and left side. I had a pry bar behind these kind of little ears that stick out from that rear main seal housing, and I was able to pry it free and work it back and forth. And now you can see the back of the engine block and your crankshaft with that rear main seal removed. Now what we're gonna wanna do is clean up this area, remove any old gasket uh, material, stuff like that. So of course, while you're cleaning up this area, you're gonna to wanna to be careful. You need to be mindful of the fact that little pieces that drop would drop into your oil pan. So if you didn't drain your oil all the way, hopefully um, if pieces did fall in there, you could drain the rest of it out when you drain your oil, do an oil change. Otherwise, obviously just do your best to prevent any debris from getting into your oil pan. 
So after I did some scraping with a gasket scraper, I did kind of one final cleaning, spraying some brake clean around the area, just making sure I got rid of any oil or anything like that. Just made sure it was nice and dry uh, before we got to installing our new rear main seal. Now I did buy a brand new rear main seal and the housing for the rear main seal as well. It seemed worth it for me just to get a new seal and a new housing. But one thing you'll have to do as you see here is you'll have to kind of pound in that rear main seal into the housing. You'll just want to kind of work it in and, and get it flush and get it all the way in. You can put a little bit of oil around the outside of the seal if you want. I've heard of some people doing that. I did not do that for mine. So basically again what you're just going to want to do is uh, use a rubber hammer or something that you can to kind of push that seal in place. Uh, you want to get it in and get it flush with uh, the housing. Next what we're going to do is apply our gasket maker. I just use some high temp Permatex. Uh, a lot of people like to use Honda Bond. Um, you can use something like that as well. And you're just going to want to apply a thin coat uh, to the area of that rear main seal housing that's going to get bolted to the engine block. And then just the way I decided to do, to do this was to apply the Permatex directly to the oil pan um, just to make it a little bit easier for me to kind of put this um, rear main housing in place, I guess. So be careful as you push that rear main seal on. Make sure that the seal itself doesn't kind of uh, roll back. You don't want that edge to roll back on the, on the crankshaft or anything. So I guess just be uh, careful when you put that uh, rear main seal back in place. Try not to get too much of that uh, gasket making material spread around either. You want to keep it you know, contained where it should be. And honestly, something that I really just learned while doing this video is that with this Permatex, if you read the directions, what it says you're supposed to do is when you initially tighten these bolts um, in this in this case, you would just tighten them up and kind of get them finger tight and maybe a little bit past just so the gasket material, um, just so that Permatex gasket making material is squishing out through the sides. And then what they tell you to do is come back about 24 hours later and then that's when you would actually torque them to spec. And that kind of makes sense to me. I guess it gives time for that gasket maker to kind of form up as a gasket and then you're doing that final uh, torque tightening uh, to, to obviously just tighten up the bolts and then make it seal. So that's just something interesting. I know a lot of people don't uh, read the directions on items like that and just throw it in there and tighten it up. Um, which may also work just fine as well, but just wanted to mention that since it's something that I learned while doing this. So here I'm just doing a final check of uh, tightening the bolts that hold that housing in place. And then we got the brand new shiny starter plate in place as well. So we put that on, had to tap it on a little bit again with our rubber hammer, and then put that bolt back in that holds it in place. So that's about it for changing the rear main seal on an EVO 8 or EVO 9. I don't think this is a very common issue, but if you are doing a clutch, it's obviously the perfect time to do a job like this because you're dropping the transmission anyways, and that's most of the work for something like this. And if you need a video on how to drop the transmission, hopefully you already watched uh, my video on that. If not, check out my channel, Boosted Films. And as always, check the comments section of this video or the description. If I did something wrong, I'm sure the internet is going to tell me that I did it wrong. And then you can learn from my mistakes and uh, check the, you know, the comments, the updates. I don't have any way of really updating this video um, if I did have any big changes. So just be mindful of that as well. So look for updates in the comment section or in the video description. And as always, this is Paul from Boosted Films saying thanks for watching.